Hey everyone, welcome to this series on cloud function. This will be a masterclass series to help you understand the different type of cloud functions available and teach you how to write each individual one. I will show you common type of cloud functions used that will help you improve your application. So firstly, Google Cloud Function is a serverless execution environment for building and connecting cloud services. What it does, it allows you to run code in response to events or actions. So for example, you can write a function and choose an event. For example, the event could be someone user clicking the button, which is an on-call cloud function, or HTTP requests, which is like you're accessing the cloud function through a link, or even database changes in your Firestore. And Google will automatically run this function in the background and execute it based on your code. This is very powerful because it's serverless. That means it can run without the user, even on the app itself. So there's two major type of cloud functions. It's cloud functions that are called directly. So you're calling the cloud function or functions that are triggered based on a background event. So for example, cloud Firestore trigger when you create a new user or when a user deletes something, you want to update a database else, a update a collection elsewhere. We will cover, firstly, the on-call cloud function, the HTTP request cloud function. I won't cover the schedule cloud function because I've actually made a YouTube tutorial on cron drops, which is basically scheduled function, which you can check there. We will cover trigger background functions, which most importantly, actually, we will cover the cloud Firestore triggers and the four event types you can use on create, on update, on delete, on write. So this will be a very comprehensive tutorial on cloud functions. And I hope by the end of this tutorial, you can use cloud functions to scale your app and, even, and build an even more complex app. A very common type of cloud function that Flutterflow kind of enforces you to use if you don't know about it, is the on-call cloud function. If you create a new cloud function on Flutterflow and then you press the boilerplate code, it adds the on-call cloud function type automatically. This basically means that a user has to initiate this function via the action flow. So for example, if you create, if you write this cloud function code to create a document, for example, the user is actually in, in this case, the user is actually clicking a button and initiating this cloud function. So I'll just write a quick example um, of a cloud function where we're just creating a new document in a collection that creates a new document with a certain value. So I've written a very basic cloud function for on, the on-core type where we're just creating a new document in a collection called on-core CF and just a random integer, integer between zero and 10. And how would you configure that? And how would you call it, right? An on-call cloud function is very easy to call on Flutterflow. You simply create a new action and you go to the cloud function action type and then you just press your function's name. And then you can easily run and test the app. And you can see here right now in the back end, there is no on-call CF documents in the collection. And then when I press this, let's close the debug panel. When I press this, while it executes, you can see here, they just, it just created a new document with a random integer of five. And I'll press it again from the app. You can see there's a new document of random integer of seven. So this is how you can write an on-call cloud function and execute it in your app. To summarize, an on-call cloud function allows the user to call it from the app itself to call this serverless cloud function that Google is executing in, the, in their Google Cloud environment from your app. Now, the next type of cloud function I wanna cover is this HTTP request cloud function. And how does this differ to the on-call cloud function, you might ask? The difference is this HTTP, HTTP request cloud function can actually be called anywhere on the internet as long as someone has access to that link. While the on-call cloud function 
allow can only be called via your app itself. So that's how it differs. You often see me use on request for a lot of web hooks. For example, web hooks are basically when a third party application needs to send you some data and you provide them a link to this on request cloud function. And then when they receive, when you receive the data, you can write a set of code to receive the data and make changes to your database based on that received data format. So a common example is Stripe. Stripe sends a lot of webhooks. So for example, if you want to update subscription, if the user has canceled the subscription, you need to set up a webhook to tell this cloud function that, uh, that the, that the cancel subscription event has occurred. And then you subsequently use that write a set of code to update your database, updating the user has unsubscribed, therefore revoking the access to premium features of your web app. So how do you write an on request cloud function on Flutterflow? Because by default, you notice that when you create a cloud function and then press boilerplate code, it makes it on call. How do you need to do it? So the trick is to not deploy this cloud function on an on call state you have to deploy it on an on request state in the code. And that's how you firstly change a cloud function from an on call cloud function to an on request cloud function. So if you look at the documentations again, you can see here, it goes exports day function, blah, 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 right? And then you need to add in the rec and res as well. So you can see here, I've written a, or a translation basically of the on call cloud function to on request cloud function. Where if we go back, you can see here, instead of data and context, there's rec and res. What rec and res means is basically request is what's been sent to you. Res is the response. What do you want to send back? So common scenario is sending back a status of 200, for example, to your third party um, provider who's sending the webhook, telling them, hey, I have received it. I'm going to send back a status of 200, meaning successful. That's the biggest major difference here for on requests versus the on call. So you can see here to recap, uh, you can see here that it goes, HT, it goes HTTPS dot on call for on call and HTTPS for on request cloud functions. And then you can see here it's rec and res request and response request means what's been sent to you response is what you also sent back. And now let's quickly deploy this. And I'll show you how you can run this cloud function. So how do we execute this on call cloud function? So to execute it, you go to console.cloud.google.com. And then you can see we've deployed two um, cloud functions, the on call and on request. And then you go to trigger. This is the URL to provide to your uh, third party's app for webhooks, or you can provide to anyone and then trigger this, um, cloud function who, to uh, by whoever has a link. Of course, you can set permissions. Make sure if you want this pub link to be triggered by anyone, you set all users as cloud function invoker. So if we remember, this function is exactly the same. We're creating a new, we're creating a new document in a collection called on -core CF, which technically should be on request, but whatever, right? So, Currently it has two documents. So if I copy this link and then just run it, you can see here it's loading and spinning, which means it's executing in the background. And then if we go back, you can actually see here that there's a random integer of three. And this will keep running and spinning because when to stop is usually when you send a, a success message back, a return message back. And because my code hasn't configured a success, a response, it will just keep spinning and spinning. A way to have this stop spinning is really just to say, um, send a response of 200 back and it will show 200 here. Anyway, that's a really outside of the scope of the video, but this is how you can create a on request cloud function um, in Flutterflow, in addition to triggering it, uh, whether it's val a direct link that you provide to someone or you just click the link yourself. Um, that's how you use an on request cloud function. In the next video, we will cover cloud Firestore trigger functions. Remember to comment, like, and subscribe for more content on Flutterflow.